Hello and welcome once again in J unit series by one test solution. This is part four of J unit in continuation of J unit annotations. I would highly recommend to watch part three before watching this session. In this session, we'll talk about some of the most popular annotation like at the rate before class, at the rate after, ignore, assume true and time out. So as far as at the rate before annotation is concerned, Let's say uh, we have to do some test data setup, which is going to be common throughout the class. Okay, so what we can do is we can do that setup part with at the rate before class annotation. So what will happen is this particular test or this particular method where at the rate before annotation is used will be executed just once and that too at the beginning of any particular test unique about uh, before at, uh, at the rate before class annotation is th this method must needs to be static in nature again as uh, with respect to the at the rate before this is also a good way to implement initialization algorithm uh, but again if something we need to set at the class level which is going to be common throughout all the test it's a good way to remove the code redundancy so let's see this in action for example, uh, I have, uh, let's say I have to do some test data setup for all these test cases. Okay. So what I can do is I can go ahead and write here at the rate before class and I'll write public static void, let's say test data setup. And here I will write, sorry, print a line. and let's say test data setup for all test. Okay, so now what will happen is this particular uh, method is going to be executed just once irrespective of which whichever method is going to be called. Okay, but the life cycle is it needs it will get executed just once. So let's run this. Right click run as JUnit test. Okay, now here you see in this test has been called just once okay likewise there is another annotation called it at the rate before class which is going to be executed once all the test has been executed at the rate before class and uh, at the rate after class annotations are a good way to clean up some global level data for example this particular method is going to do the test data setup which all the tests are going to be using now once all the tests has been, has been executed successfully and if I need to clean up my test data, I can go ahead and implement that algorithm in at the rate after class annotation. So I will go ahead and implement at the rate after. After class and I'll write here clean up test data. as data cleaned okay now one more thing to watch out here is it doesn't matter in which order these annotations are used for example here if you see at the race before class I've used first immediately after that at the rate after class annotation I have used so but it doesn't means that first this is going to be executed and then this will execute it it this uh, at the rate after class annotation is going to be called once all the tests are going to be executed okay so let's uh, run this test sorry somehow at the rate test has been removed from here okay so now let's run this test so now you see 
this at the rate before been before class has been called and then after that at the rate test data cleaned is printed that means this particular method or annotation has been called okay now next annotation uh, is let's say if i want to ignore a particular test i don't want to run this test okay so what i can do is i can write here at the rate ignore okay if you go here you will see two test both the tests have been executed now i have i if i want to ignore this particular test okay so i can use another annotation called as at the rate ignore what it does it it actually skips a particular test so now if i will go and run this only one test is going to be executed that is this one so let's run this quickly okay so now you go to j unit and you will see only one test has been executed and one has been skipped okay now let's say I, if i have thousands of tests as a part of build there may be some tests that may be taking little longer than expected and i want to mark those test cases as fail if there is a performance issue let's say if some test is taking 2 minutes or 3 minutes of course it may not be a good test so if i want to highlight those test cases as failed what i can do is i can set the timeout property or the timeout annotation on those test okay for example this particular test okay so ignore i'm going to comment it let's say this particular test i need to monitor its performance and i want to make sure that this test should not take the expected time up time so let's say if i write here timeout is equals to 10 so now what will happen is if this particular test case is going to take more than 10 milliseconds then this test is going to fail okay now if i run this at this point it's not going to fail because i am sure this test is going to be executed in less than 10 milliseconds let's see that in action okay so now both the test has been executed and uh, this particular test deposit balance increased by that amount this test has taken 0.001 second okay now what i will do is i will go ahead and, and introduce some uh, wait here so i will write thread dot sleep and i will write let's say 1000 okay let me go ahead and import this okay and i have to add exception here okay now now what will happen is it this test is going to wait for 1000 milliseconds okay now what will happen is i have also mentioned the time out here so this time this test is supposed to fail because it's going to take more than 10 milliseconds for sure so let's run this and see what happens okay go to j unit and you see this particular test has been failed because here timed out after 10 milliseconds okay so this is one of the good way if we want to control um, the performance or the execution time of a individual test now there is another uh, method called as assume true what it does it uh, let's say if i want to control my test from an external source so what we can do is we can actually use uh, assume true and we can parameterize which test we want to run or which test we want to execute for its syntax is simply write assume dot assume true and let's say i want to make i don't want to execute any test at this point so i can go ahead and make this false now what will happen is as soon as this particular method is going to be executed it will make all the test case as skipped okay because i have written assume dot assume true is equals to false in reality or in practical what we do is this particular parameter we can parameterize it let's say we can have yes or no 
flag and we can control this which one we want to execute now if at this point i am going to run this test or both the tests are going to be escaped okay so let's run this okay j unit and you see both the tests been escaped okay so we have seen at the rate before class annotation methods gets called before any test gets executed and will be called once for a class method must needs to be static and it's a good way to implement initialization uh, algorithm at the class level likewise at the rate after class annotation method gets called after all the tests gets executed it again needs to be static and it's a good way to implement the cleanup algorithm it re removes the code redundancy usually we are, we can set the post condition for a test at the rate annotation we have seen if we want to ignore or skip a particular test we can use uh, at the rate ignore assume true if false all the tests will be skipped usually used to control the execution flow from an external source we have seen at the rate timeout and it can be used to control the performance of the application or the test test will fail if the execution is not finished before the mentioned time 